Here we are again today at Conneaut Lake Vet Hospital. We're going to do another one of our programs for my dog and me. And today we're going to do a program on pet health or dental health. As far as we're going to be talking about dogs and we're also going to be talking a little bit about cat dental health. But um, we happen to have Candy Brand here with me and Archie and they happen to be in here for another reason and we needed a dog for our program so we stole Archie. And we will introduce Archie to you. Archie is a therapy dog with our Paws Hand Delivered Therapy Dog Program and he's fantastic at it. And we're going to see how he responds now to our friend, Dr. Consla. And with me, of course, is Dr. Consla, who always does our programs. And Dr. Consla, it's, you're in charge. Yeah, so um, we'll start and we'll talk about um, kind of uh, dental disease in general. Um, what we're looking for when you bring your dog or cat or ferret or whatever animal um, in as far as oral health goes. Um, there's some uh, key signs that we look for um, that tell us, you know what, maybe we should start thinking about um, a dental cleaning, maybe some more dental prophylaxis at home, you know, things to prevent the dental disease from progressing, and that gives us kind of a, a launch point to, to take the next steps, um, whatever it may be. Okay. Uh, so the first thing to do is, is to look in the mouth. So. Uh, I will come over here. And while you're talking about that, one of the things we say to people whenever they get a puppy is the importance of always getting the puppy very used to having all types of examinations. And one, of course, is the examination of the mouth by the owner, too. Right. And a lot and, of people don't do that. Yeah, and so that's as easy as just w when you have the puppy and um, you know, you're training them to sit and to get potty trained, take time to um, play with the ears, play with the feet, you know, touch the toenails, get them used to that sensation, and then uh, for our purposes today, play with the mouth. And so you, we don't want you to get bit, you know, so if they're trying to chew in that teething phase, mm -hmm. stop. Um, but the goal is that when they come in for their exam, I can lift up the lip like that and look at all the teeth, and it's not um, stressful or scary um, for the patient. And you appreciate that as far as a veterinarian. It, it, it makes have really done those It makes things. my job a little bit easier. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's look at Archie's Can you get that okay, here. Kevin? Okay. So I'm lifting up the lips, and by my thumb uh, would be a tooth. Um, that's the canine tooth in particular. And then the pink uh, tissue above it is the gums. Now Archie has a little pigment on his gums, which is normal in some breeds. Um, so that black coloration there, that's not something bad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people see that and they get worried that's uh, a normal type of thing. Discoloration on the tooth, however, is another story. Okay. Um, so if you see any discoloration instead of white on the tooth, then that's bad. Um, pink color uh, of the gums and black on the gums. Slide uh, right here. Yes, go ahead. Can be normal. Um, so for little Archie here, his teeth look pretty good. Um, they if, do. If I get way in the back here, get that hair out of the way, you can see there's a very mild brown color on that large premolar tooth there. That's, the That's tartar. Tartar, okay. Um, so the, the progression of things is we have plaque first, and then that hardens over time into tartar. And tartar's the, that brown, sometimes grayish stuff on the tooth that is like cemented on there. You pick at it and it just doesn't come off. Is that real common in dogs? It's very common. Is it more common in, in the back? Or in the front, or where it, do we it, normally it see depends. it? It um, depends. So sometimes we'll see dogs that are really good at chewing on like um, bones or rawhides or, or different toys, and they keep uh, a lot of the tartar and plaque off the back teeth, mm -hmm. but maybe not so much the front ones. Um, some dogs it seems to be more problem in the front, and then other dogs the entire mouth can be bad or good even sometimes. Um, so what happens is there's bacteria in the mouth, right? Um, we eat food, or the dog eats food, there's sugars in that. Um, the bacteria use that sugar um, to ferment and do their different processes, and that makes um, the plaque. Mm -hmm. Over time, they make what's called a biofilm. And this is basically like, like a castle or a fortress um, of bacteria. So they all get together and, and hold hands and make this... Uh, these different byproducts and it makes a structure that forms the plaque into tartar and it makes it so they can live there basically safely because there's nothing the dog can do and there's nothing that we can do real easily at home to get that off once it's there because it's so hard. It'll never come off unless it's taken off professionally? 
Typically. Basically. There's okay. one product that may or may not help, and we'll talk about that okay. later. Um, so He's hiding from you. Uh, he is. He is. He's camera shy. <laughs> camera shy. <laughs> um, so when the tartar is there, um, it's, it's not a good thing, but it's not necessarily bad. So if I see just tartar, I don't get, you know, too terribly excited. I don't usually uh, recommend going to a cleaning at that point, but that tells us that there's um, uh, that bacterial overload in the mouth and some processes happening that's causing that tartar to form. And we need to start doing some things to prevent that. Otherwise, that dental disease is going to progress to the point where we do need a cleaning. So you look at both sides of the mouth? Yep. You, um, you only looked at the one. I since, only looked at the one. Since we have arch, we better do both sides For the sides sake of check. being thorough, we can yes. peek over here. And of course, he doesn't care. And that side's pretty much the same story. And then he can smile for us. And we can see the front teeth there <laughs> as well. And then the other part of my oral exam, and they don't terribly like this, but I'll look quickly in the back of the mouth, and he's very good for it. That's not really telling me much about the teeth or the gums, but making sure I'm not missing any like polyps or masses, mm -hmm. um, diseases of the back of the tongue, back of the mouth, things like that. Just like our own dentist does. Right. Whenever the, they start the, the that tongue stuff. depressors oh, say, yes, oh. and then they put the, oh, yes, I'll add. Now, yes. uh, a unique thing in cats is um, what's called feline stomatitis complex. There's a bunch of other names for it, but basically it's where they have inflammation of the gums and the rest of the, the mouth, the, the pink tissue in the mouth, and but it's kind of in response to a very little amount of tartar. So we typically notice this in younger cats mm -hmm. first, and you'll look at and you'll see, wow, there's a lot of gingivitis in this cat, but there's really no tartar. And so for some reason, their immune system's acting inappropriately to the amount of bacteria that's there. It's mm -hmm. having like this exaggerated inflammatory response. And so you get a lot of inflammation. So looking in the back of the mouth, you can see that, oh, wow, like the back of the mouth is all inflamed uh, as well, in addition to just the gums. Mm -hmm. Now, Archie, since he has beautiful teeth, he doesn't have any gingivitis, but if he did, Right at the gum line there, where my thumbnail is, you would see a red line. So it's nice and pink right now. Mm -hmm. But if it's red, that's gingivitis. Okay? Is uh, that common among dogs? It's also, yeah, it's, it's common as well. Um, and when I see gingivitis, that tells me that we need to do a dental cleaning. Mm -hmm. Because that means that the tartar, the, the infection, that bacteria and their hardy little castle are starting to get underneath and irritating the gums. And so that means um, that all the, uh, the protective structures that keep the tooth stable, all those little ligaments and all the bone in there is at risk for being affected. Candy, do you, um, <clears throat> does, he, does Archie like bones? Mm -hmm. He likes, he has a rawhide. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving him another thing too to chew on. Mm -hmm. The other day, and, and I'm also taking um, little pads. And mm -hmm. Oh, yep. you do the teeth? Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah. was brushing it, but he, he doesn't like that. Right. Brush. So you put like the gauze on the... Yeah. Th okay, and do and that. the other day when I did it, this tooth, the canine here, mm -hmm. a big chunk came off yep. up at the top. And that'll happen while you're just doing with the gauze and yeah. if you do it faithfully right. all so the time. So like if that, um, if that tartar hasn't been there for a real long time and it's not you like you know, getting under the gum and not really attached, starting some at-home care, oftentimes you can get it to flake off. How many times do you do that? Not as often. I don't know. I don't do it. They uh, tell me all the time to do it, and I say I'm not doing that. I do lots of things, but that's not one of them. Okay, anything else with Archie? So we can go on to the rest of the things we want to discuss. Yeah. Okay, Archie, you've been a star. Thank you very much, and we'll catch you again. Thank you. Thank okay. you. What are some things that I, as an owner, would know that there were issues with my dog's teeth? Mm -hmm. um, so one is looking in the mouth like we just did okay. with Archie. So you can see that, that tartar. Um, and I have a picture here. Archie's teeth looked pretty good. But this is where it might be a little more advanced. Um, so you lift up the lip, and you know how he just had a, a very mild, kind of brownish oh, color right, on his right. teeth? See how thick that is on this Do you this see dog? a lot of that? Yes. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, and I mean, that's, you know, fairly normal um, if no home care is being done for that to happen. Now, you'll notice that this dog has those pigmented gums as well, so mm -hmm. it's hard to appreciate any gingivitis, um, but there's probably some there. Left untreated? 
It will um, progress to gingivitis, inflammation of the gums, and then it will progress to peri loss. periodontal disease. Okay. So the periodontal structures are all the things that are around the root of the tooth, mm -hmm. okay? So if we look at this model that I have here, this is the portion of the tooth that we can see, okay? And then this is clear, so look how long that root is. That's pretty impressive. I never realized that. Yeah, and we'll talk about some different extraction techniques in a little bit, but in this socket, you know, I can, this tooth comes out of this model, but basically two-thirds of the tooth is above the gum line, okay? And that is um, cemented in the bone. Th this clear uh, portion of the model is basically the maxilla, the, the upper jaw, oh, okay. the, the facial bone. Um, and in between the tooth and that socket um, are the periodontal structures. And there's little ligaments that basically hold this tooth in place so that it doesn't come out um, and cement it to the bone. Okay, so once we get past tartar here and at the gum line, that infection spreads up the tooth root, destroying those periodontal structures. Now, that's bad for the tooth because now there's nothing holding the tooth in mm -hmm. and it can fall out. Um, it's painful because this is all inflammatory. Um, remember we've talked about like with arthritis before and some mm -hmm. different things. Sure. One of the uh, signs associated with inflammation is pain. So if there's any inflammation, it's painful. It may not be excruciating, but it's probably uncomfortable to some degree. So even if there's just a thin pink line of, or a red line of gingivitis, it probably doesn't feel terribly great. Um, now imagine that inflammation all up in here all the way up in, the in these bone. very fine structures that aren't normally exposed to bacteria and things like that. Hmm. So that's not good. More painful, you'll start to get uh, tooth instability, so this will wiggle. You know, remember you know, like how uncomfortable it is to have like a loose tooth as mm -hmm. a child, um, but now it's like infected and inflammatory. Um, and then because all of this is, is covered in bone, we can actually get bone infection. So like osteomyelitis um, and things of that nature. Um, a common consequence that we'll see is a tooth root abscess. And so we often think of abscesses associated with like a, a skin puncture wound mm -hmm. or a cat bite or something like that. An abscess can happen anywhere where bacteria gets walled off. So if that bacteria travels up here and gets walled off in this little pocket, it can form an abscess. Typically we see it back on this big premolar here because um, there's multiple roots to it. And the presenting complaint is, um, you know, the dog is lethargic, they have a swelling like under the eye, and that's usually all, all pus. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the, the progression of, of dental disease there. So um, that's why we say whenever we, we start to notice gingivitis, um, we should think about getting the teeth cleaned. Okay, what about something else? Now that's if I actually want to look at my dog's mouth. Mm -hmm. What are some other signs that I might see? You said lethargic or a little bit of swelling. Yeah, so that, that's, that's kind of like, one. that's like worst case scenario. Okay, what about more, the bad breath? Yeah, more common dogs? would be bad breath. Ugh. So remember all that tartar and plaque is yeah. bacteria based, right? Um, so bacteria are uh, fermenting and that makes the bad odor. Uh, so it's just like if, if you don't take a bath, you start to stink, right? That's because those bacteria are growing and becoming overpopulated and making all these byproducts which smell. What about the food that they eat? Will that cause some of the smell? Um, that is up for debate now. So we used yeah. to say that, you know, oh, like if you feed dry food, the dog's going or cat or whatever is going to be a lot better off than if you feed canned food. Um, there's some studies that ha have come out over the past several years that suggest maybe it's not so much the food, but um, some genetic factors of the dog. Um, some dogs are just going to be predisposed to have dental disease regardless of what we do. Um, sometimes feeding different foods will help. We'll talk about some of those later. But well, some dogs um, but, can be predisposed to dental difficulties. Right, and, and so okay. we tend to think of like the small breed dog. So you take like a, a normal, you know, dog-shaped head and then you squish it into like a pug head or a chihuahua head, you know. You're talking about my shih tzu. <laughs> exactly. And, and mine has a double row of teeth down here. Mm -hmm. and my lasso does too, which is strange. We've pulled some of those out since then. But. And so they're just so much more predisposed yeah. to, to dental disease. So sometimes larger dogs, maybe you can get away with just giving them like a, a chew toy regularly or something. But for mm -hmm. the smaller dogs, usually you've got to be 
doing something more um, proactive earlier on than you would think. You and I talked about this. I had my loss. I remember he was eating food uh, strange. Mm -hmm. I kept on saying, and by the way, I think he's doing it again, but he would turn his head when you gave him a biscuit. Remember, mm -hmm. I remember you sitting yep. on the floor working on that. I said, no, I'm telling you, whenever you give him a treat, he turns his head or he only takes it on one side. Mm -hmm. I think he still has issues there, but that's something that made me aware of, that's not normal. Dogs right. take it normally head on, yeah. but he was doing it from the side. So. And that's a good thing to point out. So that might be an indicator, um, a change in, in feeding habits, mm -hmm. whether it's turning to one side, um, dropping food, um, having difficulty swallowing um, after they've chewed. We'll see that in cats with that inflammatory condition, um, gagging. Um, some dogs and cats interestingly chew on one side more than the more other. Than the other. Um, so sometimes, you know, I'll be looking and maybe the left side has a ton of tartar and the right side is almost spotless. Wow. Um, I never realized that. And that, so, yeah. you know, they're crunching more, chewing more on the one side, which is just having some mechanical action of keeping that plaque and, and tartar off um, versus the other side. So I come to you and I say my dog has an issue or I smell the breath of my dog mm -hmm. or there's something else and you've done the dental exam. And now you say what to me? Um, so yeah, so if there's um, if there's gingivitis, then we recommend a dental cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about that next, and then we'll talk about if there's not gingivitis, what we need to do, um, or what we do after the dental as well. Okay. Um, so. Uh, if there's gingivitis or more advanced disease like the periodontal disease or whatever it may be, a fractured tooth, um, things like that, um, we go for the dental cleaning. So that starts um, with a, a scaler. Um, but wait a minute, you're gonna, is my dog put to sleep for this? It, it's a under anesthesia. Okay, and um, is there a certain age, like my dog is 12, should I be concerned about it with him? Well, we would recommend, uh, you know, during the exam we're listening to the heart and lungs, feeling the pulses, um, recommending blood work before anesthesia, but age in itself isn't a reason to be concerned about anesthesia. Okay. Now if we do the blood work and the kidney values are sky high or we hear a heart murmur, then that, you know, changes things. That doesn't mean we can't do it. Um, if it's really needed, but we might have to pick some different medications, um, consider an x-ray beforehand. Um, so that's why all those um, kind of extra things that we might talk about it if one of those problems pops up are, are helpful because it makes us make the anesthetic procedure safer for the patient. Okay, so you're gonna put my dog to sleep for this. Mm -hmm. okay. So we, we put in a catheter, we put them under anesthesia. Um, they have IV fluids the entire time mm -hmm. to keep blood pressure and everything normal. Um, they get an antibiotic injection um, because when we're going in and cracking off all of that tartar, remember mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bacterial fortress. And so all of that bacteria is getting into the gums, which is basically blood vessels and connective tissue, so you get bacteria in the blood. This happens every time we brush our teeth too, just to a, a smaller extent. So we wanna make sure that um, we're dealing with that bacteria that's getting into the bloodstream okay. as well. Um, now when I was out in California, there was a, a big controversy about doing dentals without anesthesia. Um, and the, the controversy is that um, there's really no way. How no, would you do well, that? Well, they would just stand there and you'd go through and, and scale off the target. Really? The, and the, lose your fingers in the process. <laughs> The controversy and the reason why the American Veterinary Medical Association doesn't support that type of procedure is because you can't really thoroughly get under the gum line where the, the extra tartar is causing or that the back gingivitis. Of them too. Yeah, or, hard I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's hard. It looks easy on this model, but you have to remember, like, on Archie, I could pull the, the lips back to about there. Right. So what about all, look at, there's uh, two teeth uh, back behind that big sure. one. Sure. And they're, they're hard to get to. See how they come into the middle of the mouth there? I didn't realize that. And so they're, they're hard to get to. So doing that in an awake dog is just very impractical. You can't do a thorough job at getting under the gum line either with, so we're putting with that them to scaler. Sleep. Okay. So that's why we put them under. The other reason is um, for those awake dentals, they still give them some sort of pre-medication. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens when you get in there and you find a tooth that's loose and painful? Well, if somebody, if I'm at the dentist and they poke a sore spot, I'm going to be, you better give me something. When no, they, I'm, I'm not sitting when in this they chair. Pick, that's about all I need yeah. is when they start picking at them. Um, right. Or maybe nothing painful happens, but you notice, oh, look, um, there's something we didn't expect. That tooth has to come out. Now the animal has to go under anesthesia anyway, um, and you're like halfway through a procedure, and so it, it's less streamlined um, than if they're already under. And so you kind of anticipate that you could maybe have an issue with some dogs, and then you... 
hopefully have given them enough so that you can get this done or if you have to do something else like a pooling. Yeah. Okay. So it's just not, it's not practical. It's not safe for, um, or, or good for the dog or the person. Okay. So when they're under anesthesia, they're not licking, they're not moving. Uh, we can go through very quickly and precisely and just get everything done that, that needs to get done. Okay. So we put the dog out, the dog's on the table. It's mm -hmm. a special table, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so it's it's similar to our exam table, but the top comes off and it has a, a grate there um, mm -hmm. because we use a lot of water during the procedure to keep rinsing things off. Um, and then it has a special dental unit um, attached to oh, it. Okay. And so the first part of that is the scaler. Um, I don't have that part with me, but it kind of looks similar to that. It's angled um, and it's an ultrasonic scaler. So it has like little sound waves that come out hmm. and we run it along the tooth and those fine sound waves crack that tartar and make it come off. Right away? Does it take a lot to do that? Generally, it's pretty quickly. Really? Now, okay. because it, it, it's it's ultrasound, little sound waves, you don't just want to set it on the tooth because that could crack the tooth. Um, so we go you know, back and forth. And then remember, we want to make sure we get up under the gum line there okay. um, to get that infection that is under there. Um, so that's first? So that's first. We do the whole mouth. So there's, there's four rows of teeth, basically. Um, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they go along here, 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 outside, and inside. I was gonna say inside also. Yeah, okay, okay. so go through all of those teeth um, doing that. Now let's say um, the gingivitis was mild, um, no other abnormalities were found, um, and, and to do that we're using the little probes just like they use at our dentist, and we go along each aspect of the tooth and make sure there's no pockets. Okay. Sometimes a, a tooth can um, look good on the outside, but it has a, a pocket, um, and that can be a problem as well. Um, then, so everything looks good, and then we go to the polisher. Does that look familiar? Oh, yes. Yep. Um, so it, put toothpaste on a tooth. Yep. Do you? Uh, okay. A little polishing toothpaste. So th this is um, very important because when you're going through with this ultrasonic scaler. Um, it creates like little micro scratches on the tooth. If you just did that, then it's just like monkey bars for the bacteria to grab onto. Um, so it's easier for them to take hold again. So that's why the when we're at the dentist and your dog's getting a dental cleaning, we have to polish because that smooths everything off again. And it's like, you know, ice. There, there's nothing for them to have traction right, got on. got it. So again, go around. We have a little toothpaste. We go around each aspect of the tooth, inside and outside, all four rows. Okay. Now the other thing that is commonly recommended is um, dental x-rays. Um, and the reason that is is because um, you can't always see what's going on under the gum line. So that tells you about the health of the tooth roots. Now obviously that's an, an added cost. Right, that was my next question. So um, we usually give um, the owner the option um, as to whether or not they want us to is do it that more, or not. Is it something you should do as a, uh, as a baseline? Mm -hmm. So do it like maybe the first time they get their cleaning, do the x-rays, or is it only whenever we think there's trouble, or is it whenever they get older? Or De definitely when there's trouble. I don't trouble. want to keep doing this because, remember, it's the, right. it's the extra right. cost. Definitely when there's trouble. So sometimes, you sure. know, we'll find a lesion or... Um, we'll have a fractured tooth just on exam, mm -hmm. and we say we need to know what's going on deep okay. to this to make the, the best approach. Um, otherwise, you know, technically, ideally, you would do it every time, um, but at least at, at some point, just so you know. Typically, well, I it's... Mean, and we always talk about this, and, you're, and, and I appreciate this in you as a veterinarian because you're very realistic about what type of money we're spending as mm -hmm. owners. I'm just concerned how many times I should be doing this and right. whether or not I can really afford it. We always say, what's the least I can get away with yeah. and still provide good health to my dog? So most common would be, you know, we either see something beforehand or something during the procedure and, and we you say, um, you know, we can proceed without the x-ray, but mm -hmm. it's just taking a little bit more risk. Okay. So if you're comfortable with it, let's take an x-ray and make sure that we know what the roots are doing before we start extracting your when, or so When they do so x-rays for a human, they do the wing bites and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How many different times can you do the whole mouth at yeah, one time? Yeah, so they have units that are like that where you have like a little film that goes in there and a thing that comes down. Or you can even use like standard like x-ray that you would use for like the chest or leg and you just position the head a little bit Is that what we do here? Mm-hmm. To get the, the different angles okay. uh, of the rows. Um, 
So if, if everything looked good, we polished the tooth. We polished we, it. We didn't have to take any x-rays or anything. Um, then they get woken up. Okay. Easy peasy. Um, they usually wake up um, pretty quickly, you know, just based on our anesthetic protocols within five minutes. Um, they're extubated and back in their cage getting warmed up um, with their technician and they usually go home the same day. Sure. Um, because we're not making, you know, any big incisions or anything like that. Um, what are we taking? Are we going to talk about what we're taking? Yeah, so for, for a routine dental, let's say we didn't pull any teeth, um, there wasn't real bad gingivitis, um, it's just an antibiotic for about five days five or days. so. Yep, and that's because, you know, we cracked off all mm -hmm. that tartar. Um, so let's talk about the non-routine dental. Okay. So that's where things are more advanced. Maybe there's a fractured tooth. Um, maybe there's periodontal disease, you know, up in those fine ligaments or the, the bone, and we have to pull some different teeth. Um, typically, we're dealing with like one of two scenarios. One is um, the teeth are really, really bad, and they come out really easy because they're just rotten. Terrible. Okay? Um, or uh, the other scenario that it seems like we commonly have is the tooth is, has a problem, but it's otherwise pretty darn healthy. And so we have to do some different techniques to get it out. You've heard the phrase, it's like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. There's a reason like for that. Teeth. <laughs> like the dog, the young dog that eats um, rocks, eats rocks. cracks That's its tooth, and, and tooth. the pulp is exposed and it's painful. Now we gotta take it out. Now we gotta take it out. So aside from the crack that is, you know, right there, the rest of this tooth is all healthy. Okay. And he probably has, and he's in good shape, so his teeth and everything's good. Everything so else really is good pretty good. To get it out. Yeah. Okay. So um, let, let's say it's a rotten tooth. Um, so we still go through, even if the teeth are obviously terrible, we get all that tartar cracked off mm -hmm. um, because sometimes we'll see, and this is why sometimes when we're trying to give an idea of cost for a dental, um, I tell people it might change a little bit because maybe we have all of that heavy tartar Such on as there. That like this, and it looks like, you know what, that's probably just, you know, some tartar, we'll get it cracked off, polish it up, good to go. Sometimes when we get that cracked off, you actually discover that like the bifurcation of the tooth root. The what? The bifurcation of the tooth root, I'm gonna show you. What's bifurcation? This, You're this using little, these big words. This little split off here. Oh, okay. So maybe the gums, instead of being like that, are up like that. And that's not healthy because that means half of that root is diseased and exposed. Um, sometimes we'll find that that, that tartar has actually like cemented the tooth kind of in place and once you get it cracked off, the tooth comes right out. Bifurcation. Up. Bifurcation. Bifurcation. Mm -hmm. That's my word for the day. Yeah. You can tell your friends. I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so uh, that, that's how that can change mm -hmm. a little bit. So if it's really easy, uh, we still go through, crack off all the tartar. Um, we don't polish them, obviously, if we're going to take the, no. the tooth that's going to be removed. Um, that's silly. Um, so let's do one of these uh, little ones here that are a little easier to get. So these are extractors. It's a it's fun like word, too. Yeah, I, I know that word. It's like a pair of pliers. Okay, a pair of pliers. And so basically you're, you're gripping the tooth and pulling it out. Do they ever break off? They can break off. So I, I mean, think you, I had that happen with one of mine. Yeah, so you can even see like on this tooth, um, the, the crown, the portion that you see, is pretty mm -hmm. small compared to the root, which is oh, the case yes. with many of these, these teeth. Now, especially if the, the roots are very diseased, they're much more um, fragile, and it's possible for them to come off uh, more to break teeth. more easily. More bad teeth on the top or on the bottom, generally? Generally, I would say on the top. Um, really? It seems to be the case. And I don't know if that's because, like, um, that grinding action of this tooth, you know, keeps the side of that clean mm -hmm. when it comes down, and so more stuff builds up in the cheek here. Um, that's just a theory, but the, that's, the, that's the bottom a, teeth can be... That's a Donnie Consus. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, yeah it works. the bottom teeth can be just as bad, though. Okay. Okay, um, so if the teeth are pretty bad, um, they're generally easier to get out. So let's talk about the tough ones to get out. Um, there's three main um, teeth on the top that really give us a struggle. That would be the canine tooth here. The big one. The car yeah, the big one. Um, the carnasal, or the first premolar, and then this first molar here. They all have double roots. Well, the, carna well, that the, one the, the canine course. just has one big one. And then, yeah. Those. So everything else pretty much has a double root except for these ones that have a triple root. Um, Good Lord. So you can see there's three roots there. And then our little friend behind So the first it. choice, the hardest one is the, the, this one here. They, they can all be a big pain in the butt. 
So the ones with the triple roots. Yeah, we'll we'll go through and talk about what we can do to get those out. Um, so let's start with these two because they're kind of similar. So this is the first molar and uh, the first premolar. Um, they both have three roots. And so um, what we can do is section these teeth, which is a fancy way of saying cutting them in half uh, before we to try and them take them out. So what we'll do is um, we'll go through, get all the tartar off, and then whenever we're extracting a tooth, we use these uh, instruments called elevators. You can see they're kind of like uh, spoon-shaped, concave mm -hmm. on the front, and they're, they're kind of sharp, um, and then they're uh, smooth on the bottom. And this acts to get those periodontal tissues that are cementing the tooth in place uh, to get them loose um, because that's what's holding the tooth root in. So when you go through, you're like, all right, I got to extract this tooth. It's not totally rotten, so we just can't pull it out. Uh, we go through with these and you insert it under the gum line like that. And you basically put slow pressure on it because remember, there's ligaments in there and ligaments are, are very tough and you can't just tug on them and expect them to break. It takes a, a decent amount of force. So what we're doing by inserting like that and twisting is we're stretching out those ligaments. We're fatiguing them is another word that you'll hmm. hear. So basically they get to a point where they're fatigued, um, they can't hold on any longer, and that allows you to take the tooth out. Now that sounds really easy, right? You just go around. I have a feeling it's not easy. It is not easy because they're strong. So, and you have to do it around every aspect of the tooth. So on the front part here, it's very easy to get access to. You know, the lip is pulled back to about sure. there. This is no problem. The front one's not bad. But what about back here? You know, that's an odd angle. And remember, this other tooth is right beside it. It is sitting right beside it there. Uh, so that gets a little tougher. And then the inside, you know, you have to get around all aspects of it to get around all the roots of this tooth. Wow. <laughs> Who does this? So the, um, the technicians with veterinary supervision will do um, the, cleaning the cleaning and the polishing. polishing. And then for big extractions like it this, should. it's us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, for a more straightforward tooth, like maybe one of these little ones, we're going around weakening everything and you can pull it out um, with, with less effort. For these big ones um, with the multiple roots, uh, we'll do that same process. And remember our bifurcation? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'll have that uh, get it worked down to basically so I can see that bifurcation because that gives me a landmark, right? Um, and that bifurcation is right in between basically half of the tooth. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So then I'll take uh, a Dremel-like tool and I will actually cut down the middle of that tooth. And split it so it's easier and to split get it. Out. So now look, the big super strong root, it's all by itself. And that's the one that's... So close to the one behind. So close to the one behind it. So now getting in between those two easier. big teeth is a lot easier. So we can take that out. And then the front one, the front two, kind of just looks like one of those easier ones mm -hmm. to get out now, mm -hmm. right? So um, that's one way that we can make that a lot quicker. You can get it out um, without sectioning it, but it takes a lot longer. And one of the, the, the big rules of anesthesia is to minimize um, the time, time that, that they're under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So it, it's good medicine to section that tooth and get it out as quickly as possible. We're taking the tooth out anyway, so it's not like cutting it in half it is painful or anything right. like that. Part of the pre-meds is pain medication, um, so they don't feel it. And then we can also do local blocks, um, like we do when we go to the dentist, of um, lidocaine, bupivacaine, lo local acting, acting anesthetics to, to numb that area as we pull it as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just another means of, of pain control. Mm -hmm. um, the one that sits behind it, that kind of goes into the middle, is kind of the same story. Um, so I'm just cutting it on this axis, right. however. And then again, I'm left with those little two friends by themselves and this one by and itself. Big, okay. Yep. Um, so that makes that one a little easier. I'm wondering what you're going to do with this one. And that one. So that many, do many dogs lose this one? Um, if the if the disease is very advanced, um, yes. And then the other reason we see it need to be pulled is that it gets broken. They, I know the stone, yeah. the stone eater. Um, so it'll get you know cracked right across there, and it's very painful. And anytime there's a fractured tooth, remember the pulp of the tooth is blood vessels, so it's just a great oh. spot for bacteria to get it. And there's lots of bacteria in here, so this tooth can be a little more complicated. If it's really diseased, 
you can still use the same technique of going under the gum and working all the way around. Look how far up in there that oh, is. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It makes me nervous. Yeah. Because I'm thinking what it would be like if you were do a dentist were doing it to me. I don't yeah. like it. Well, fortunately for you, our, our tooth roots aren't quite that long. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> and you can go around. Unless you have fangs or something. Yeah, yeah. Or you're a vampire. Yeah, right. And they would be and long. there's probably other problems <laughs> if that's going on. <laughs> so we get um, all the way around that tooth. Um, and then if it's really diseased, you can pull it right out. Um, but that's often not the case. So we do what's called a gingival flap procedure. So what that means is um, the, the struggle with this tooth is that the root is so long, you can't get up around it or you can't, it just takes forever. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a way that we can get better exposure to the tooth root. So that's what this gingival flap procedure is for. Cut the gum. So you make an incision. It's had to be in the gums here, okay? That's gingival is gum, and mm -hmm. it's a flap, and you pull that back. Now, the tough part of the procedure is the next thing. So you've elevated the gum, and now you have those periodontal structures, that bone there, mm -hmm. okay? The bone is what is going to make everything heal up okay. So then you have to elevate the bone off of the tooth root and have that come back with your flap. If that bone comes off, the whole thing's kaput. It's going to be very tough to get it to heal. Um, and then, once you have those two things pulled back, you have all this exposure to this root. And so this side that, that's facing us, you've already elevated that bone off with your flap. So now you only have three sides to work with, and you can get really right. nice angles around it, pop the tooth out. And then you have to close that flap back down. And then we also fill the socket, because look how big that socket sure. is. That's what do you and we'll, fill it with? And we'll do that with some other teeth. It's like a, a bone um, cement oh, okay. type material. It's like a powder, um, and we mix it uh, and pour it in there, and then suture this closed. So many of us, uh, for different conditions with our dogs, have gone down to um, <coughs> PVSEC down mm -hmm. there in Camp Horn Road in Pittsburgh. Yep. Are there ever situations involving dental health of a dog or a cat that requires care beyond what mm -hmm. our vet and our veterinarians are good at every one of the places here but a veterinarian says you know what this is beyond us you now must go yeah to pvsec what would be an example of something um, that pvsec so something uh might be uh like maybe there's a fractured tooth in like a one-year-old dog like it just got its adult teeth right mm -hmm. um, but it's not fractured to the point where like it's damaged down here mm -hmm. And they can do uh, like a root canal uh, procedure to save that tooth for that dog. People basically. do that. Yep. Um, and so that's one thing that can be done. Um, some weird like congenital abnormalities um, like uh, malformations, you know, things are just in the right. wrong spot. Right. Maybe there's like a duplicate tooth or like a random tooth that just never grew out. That's kind something they would Weird do. stuff like that. Um, and then uh, we've had some patients that have been down there for other things, um, uh, multiple other problems. So maybe if they're like a huge anesthetic risk and they, um, the hesitation to put them under is, you know, they have a heart disease, they have a collapsing trachea and kidney disease. We can do all of that here, but it'd be nice if there was like a dedicated anesthesiologist, you know, two or three other assistants. And so the advantage uh, down there is they can get the cardiologist, mm -hmm. the anesthesiologist, um, a respiratory specialist, all, all to kind of be a part of. The are there procedure. veterinarians that just do dental health? Yep, there are our veterinary oh, no, no, no. dentists. <laughs> um, uh, the one down at PVSCC is wonderful, uh, Dr. Mendoza. Uh, oh, she's wow. very good. Um, but yeah, sometimes um, there are, are weird things that we, we do send down okay. there. So um, if we do any extractions, um, we try to close uh, with suture. Um, it's, uh, they, they fall out on their own, basically. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have to come back for a, a dental suture removal. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, um, and then how often after I have, let's, let, let's take it one step now mm -hmm. beyond. So I've already done the dental on my dog. Yep. What's my follow-up? Let's talk about a good dental yeah. health program. So if uh, there's Candy does it. I mean, mm -hmm. God love her. She was, you know, cleaning the teeth. I don't do that. Yeah. So if there were extractions, they come back in three to five days just to make the, sure the extraction sites look healthy. There's okay. not food stuck on the sutures or uh, anything has opened up. And then, you know, the, the mouth heals very quickly. Um, from there, uh, we have a dental program. So if you, if you do a dental cleaning, you're automatically in the program. 
and what happens from there is we'll have a, a dental progress exam in six months. That's free, there's no charge for that. Um, it's a visit with a technician to basically come in, look at the animal's mouth, say, okay, look, you know, we're starting to get some tartar, tartar buildup again. again. What are you doing at home? Um, do you want to try some of these other things to slow this down? Um, the only thing you have to do um, to stay in the program is follow our recommendations. Right. So if we say, look, there's gingivitis, she needs another dental within the next like month or two to stay in the program, you gotta schedule that dental cleaning. And I would imagine that the majority <clears throat> of veterinarian clinics in our Crawford County and around our area have something like that. Uh, yeah, they Everybody's might. gotta have it. Right. Because it's so important. And, so and so sure that, uh, check with your veterinarian, your yeah. local veterinarian, or whoever you go to and see what they do. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, some specials for February Pet Dental Month, right. um, but the dental member program, uh, benefits are better than that and you can use them any time of the year. So if it's August and your dog needs a dental, it still gets a better discount than the February Oh, special. okay, well. So that's kind of like another. It's February, I better get my one big boy down here and have his teeth looked at. Um, I think the breath is smelling. Yeah, so uh, that that's kind of like the immediate follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, then long-term uh, follow-up, uh, so if your dog or cat uh, had a dental, um, Obviously, they, they're prone to dental disease. We need to do something to prevent that. Or if you came in for the exam or the dental progress exam, um, and we said, hey, there's some tartar, some plaque here, but no gingivitis, um, but let's start doing some stuff at home, some preventative care. And that's where all of this stuff okay, let's see um, what our choices comes into place. So there's, there's varying degrees uh, of options as far as how involved you have to get, how much you have to be in the animal's mouth, um, and how effective they are essentially. So um, that's important because not everybody is capable of doing certain Absolutely. things. And or not, do it. not all animals will let you do let it. You do it. And yeah, some people just don't want to have to do it. Right. Um, so let's start with um, brushing. Brushing is probably the most effective. Um, and cost-effective thing that you can do. Um, this is a special dog toothpaste. Do not use human toothpaste. Really? Yeah, um, because they swallow it. They don't spit it out. Oh. Um, this is an enzymatic toothpaste. So remember the plaque is getting turned into tartar? Right. Um, so this enzyme helps prevent that from happening. Okay, this so one is, is chicken flavored. They make, uh, I think, like beef flavored, a vanilla mint, if you're not into and the that includes flavoring. the toothpaste and the brush. This is the toothpaste, and then for the toothbrush, um, they make dog toothbrushes. I use when I go to the dentist and they give me my new one. I ship my old one to the dog. Oh, okay, so you can use a, a human toothbrush. Yep. Okay, got it. Soft bristled, um, and then get it for the size. So if it's a 90-pound German Shepherd, a regular adult toothbrush is going to be fine. If it's a three-pound Chihuahua, get the kitty one. Get the little baby All toothbrush. Right. Um, so ideally, people always say, how often do I have to do that? Well, ideally every day. How often do you brush your teeth, right? How many people do that? Some do. Do they really? Not a lot, but some do. Um, mm. I, I do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and how long does it take? 30 seconds. All right. And we, we did one demonstration in one of our previous episodes, and we did eyes, ears, and mouth, right. where I brought my little Charlie oh, dog that's in right. we, yes, and demonstrated did. how to brush teeth. So you can go back in the catalog to, yes, to you find can look that. At that. Okay. Um, as often as you can do it is the best. Some people do it once a week. Some people do it a few times a week. Some people do it every day. Should you do it after you've had a cleaning? But if you've never done a cleaning, mm -hmm. does it still have a benefit for you to start doing it? Yes. Okay. Because any of I'm these things... I'm hoping you would say no. <laughs> any of these things are going to slow down the progression of dental disease. Okay. So if there's not gingivitis yet, we don't need a cleaning yet, our goal is to increase the amount of time until we need a cleaning. All right. Okay? Um, so toothpaste. Um, other things that require you to get in the mouth would be um, the dental sprays. Um, so the first one is uh, Nolvadent. Uh, this is an antimicrobial. It has chlorhexidine in it. Um, and so remember, bacteria are causing the problem. So if you use an mm -hmm. antibacterial wash, basically, um, 
then you can get rid of some of the bacterial load. Is that um, the one I use with gauze? Yeah, so this one you put on like a little gauze square and you still have to rub it on the teeth in a brushing motion. Okay? I'm chasing around the house. Yeah, they, so you don't have to use a toothbrush, um, but <laughs> you still have to get in the mouth. Okay, I'm gonna think about this now because I've done the program and I'll at least think about doing yeah. it. Um, right, what's next? This next one is called Liba 3. Um, and this one's kind of hit or miss. It's probably the most expensive of all of them, but it's also a little bit of a gamble. Um, so it is the only thing other than the dental cleaning um, that can get tartar off of the teeth. Okay, so that thick brown gray stuff okay. can, can get it off consistently. Now why is it a gamble? It's very specific on the pH, the acidity level of the dog's mouth for how well it works. So I can talk from personal experience. Um, I had one dog, my German Shepherd, and he had kind of like this picture um, here, mm -hmm. kind of like this heavy tartar. No gingivitis or anything, um, but um, needed to start doing something. Um, so I was lazy, I didn't feel like brushing every day, so I was like, oh, I'll give this a try. And within a month, um, the tartar was melted off the teeth. Easy peasy, right? And that's the same way with the gauze. It's different. Oh. It's different. The gauze, oh, I'm sorry. The gauze will not get large chunks of tartar off. It might get a little bit off here and there, but it's not going to kind of melt it off like this Okay. Well. Now, my little Chihuahua Charlie, who of course is, he's small, so he's prone to all sorts of dental diseases. He's had multiple cleanings, etc. We do multiple of these things. I was like, oh, wouldn't that be wonderful if it worked on him? And it didn't work at all. And how do you use that? So it's a spray in the mouth. Um, no food or water 30 minutes before or after. Um, and it, it's based on body size, so like one to two sprays in the mouth. So it's pretty easy to get. So you'd have to hit it four places? Nope, nope. You ju it mixes with the saliva. So you just open the mouth, psst, Oh, close oh the mouth. that sounds like that's We've lost a tooth. We've lost a tooth. <laughs> I see it. Here it is. Um, so it, it's not that challenging to give, but it doesn't always work. Um, and it, it's a little more expensive. Okay. If it does work, it's wonderful. So um, some situations where I've used it aside from my own dogs would be some cats um, that had um, some more advanced disease um, and they had you know, uh, some heart, concurrent heart mm -hmm. disease. The owner was apprehensive to put them under anesthesia despite you know, the, the precautions we would take. Well, he said, let's, let's try this. So he did it for a month, came back, and there was already improvement and he's been doing it um, for a year or so now. And are the teeth perfect? No, but they're not progressing and they're actually improving. Okay. Um, so that, that can be an option. Um, there's just some variability to, based on the, um, uh, the pH of the dog's saliva. Okay. Um, but when it works, it's very nice. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's get into, th those are kind of the more hands-on types of things, right? All right. Let's get into stuff that you say, look, I don't want to stick my fingers in my dog or my cat or my ferret's mouth and um, I just want to do something easy and I want it to be something that the dog is excited about. I will say my dogs are super excited about getting their teeth brushed. We talked about how to brush in, in that other episode, um, so it can be done. Okay. Um, so this is probably our most popular. Um, this is a water additive. It also has an enzyme in it. So remember the toothpaste had an enzyme in it? This has an enzyme in it as well. Um, you mix it into their drinking water, and all they have to do is drink water, which they do how many times a day, and they get their treatment throughout the day. How often do you... So all, every time you fill the water dish, you put that in? Yep. We talked about that with Dr. Wade. I've got five water dishes at my house. I said, this isn't going to work. <laughs> You'd have to mix up yeah, a lot I of mean, it. Yeah, so with one dog, that would be a great one where you yeah. regulate and know the water because right. I, mine were slopping more water on the floor sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that why, works. Why do people like this? Because easy. all they have to do is make, they're filling up the water bowl anyway. You put a pump in and you're good to go. Um, does it work? We've been using this for about a year and a half maybe close to two years now. Um, so we're starting to get back a lot of patients that, that started on it um, and, and have been using it for a year, year they or like two it. years. Um, the dogs don't drink any differently and we're actually seeing that it is, it's halting the progression of dental disease. Okay. Now this isn't going to melt off existing tartar or make it go away, um, but the dogs that you know had some tartar and we said let's do something and the owners opted for this, they come in a year later for their annual exam, and my notes for 
Today's exam are ex for the mouth are exactly the same as they were a year ago as far as the amount of tartar that's there. So it does work, it's easy. Uh, the nice thing about this, it doesn't have any um, artificial sweeteners, um, detergents, alcohols, or antibiotics or anything like that. It's just the enzyme, um, so you're not you know, using an antibiotic regularly. There's some of the artificial sweeteners are toxic, so that's why that's a concern, so um, it's very safe. And they can well. get all these products at a veterinarian office, or probably if they were... Well, these are the ones that, we, so. that, that right. we carry. Um, and probably get something like that online, but somebody else yeah, doesn't come here. Pretty okay. much all of these um, are, are up front okay. um, that you could walk in. Um, except for the Liba, that's prescription. Um, but mo like the toothpaste, the water additive, the treats and stuff, those are on our, our counter. Right, and they front. probably are most of the vets. They I'm would sure. have something similar. Similar. Um, so next would be dental treats. So these are the Oravet chews. Okay. Um, there's, you know, the Greenies. I think Milk Bone has one out now. Um, you can find all sorts of different things. And they do um, all sorts of different things. This Oravet chew is a little more uh, sciencey as far as how it works. It has a, a molecule in it that makes it so the bacteria can't stick to the mm -hmm. tooth. So that's kind of its benefit. And then it's also kind of dense, um, so it makes the dog um, have to chew on it a little bit. So you can feel, this is for uh, a little dog. Um, and you give them one of these? Once a day. Um, and you can feel, you know, they, they'd have to they do are. some, some sure. chewing to get through that. Um, so this is a nice option. When not to use this. If your dog is a gulper, AKA doesn't chew, just swallows whatever you put in front of mm -hmm. it, this is not a, a good option um, because okay. uh, they need to, to chew Could it you cut that apart? Um, it, it defeats some of the, the chewing mechanical oh, action. Okay. Um, and if they're just swallowing it, then that molecule that makes it so the bacteria can't stick isn't getting coated okay. over the teeth. Um, so those are nice. Um, like I said, there's the greenies. Um, basically, what you want to look for is something that has the VOHC seal of approval. Mm -hmm. That's the Veterinary Oral Health Care. Um, it's a, a group of veterinary dentists, and they actually do some studies to say, hey, we fed greenies or the Orvet shoes or whatever for you know however long, and it and actually made a difference. Okay. Um, so whatever brand you're going with it's on the back look for that little seal now you're getting to my favorite one yeah so this is on um, TD this is a, a prescription yes. diet um, from Hills um, so this is a food mm -hmm. um, so you can use this a couple of different ways you could feed it as a regular diet or you could use it as treats we yeah, it's expensive as a regular diet for right. a lot of dogs so. Um, so we typically say like six to eight pieces throughout the day mm -hmm. and the way that this works is the pieces are larger than a, than a normal kibble, even for, for the cats. Um, so it forces the animal to have to chew a little bit more. Right. right. And then the, the treat, the, the way it's designed is a little bit different too. So a normal piece of kibble, as soon as the points of the teeth come together like that, it crumbles apart, right? This doesn't. This doesn't. No. This allows the tooth to sink down into mm -hmm. the kibble, which allows the food to scrape the sides right. of the teeth. Um, so it's like a little mini brushing, if you will. Yeah. And then once the tooth gets most of the way through, it falls apart. I use that. I use that as treats every time mm -hmm. they come in. That's their thing. They know they come in from outside. Yep. Everyone gets one. So mine probably get, I'd bet, six, seven a day. Yeah. Or whatever. And I like it. I, I think it, it mm -hmm. has made a difference with my dogs. And, and it's got a lot of, you know, studies behind it. it it's balanced, so it can be mm -hmm. fed regularly. Um, or as the treats, if you're using it as the treats, pull back, you know, uh, a on few pieces on the regular food. Sure. Remember, they're bigger. So, like, the, the, the large breed dog ones, would you say, are about that size? About. I use, the, I've got four dogs, of course, too big and too small, but I use just the small ones. Yeah. Which works for everybody, so. So, if you're given, you know, six of the big ones throughout the day, that's like five, six, seven, eight regular pieces sure. of kibble. So sure. just adjust a little bit so we don't have any extra weight gain on it. Um, but the, the dental diets are a good option as well. So as a, so as a pet owner, mm -hmm. I better get my dog on some dental program. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, pre prevention is the best medicine, yeah. like they always say. Um, so if we can do any of these things, whatever is convenient for you and for your pet um, is good. 
Um, many of these can be used in cats as well. I would say people tend to go for the, the less hands-on types of things, sharper teeth. I would and, think, and yes. We don't want to get, um, have that happen. And then, you know, if if you're using this and the, the disease progresses over time or if they just come in and the disease has already progressed, um, then we go to the, the dental cleaning route. Anything else? Last, what's three things we better remember from today? Um, prevention. Prevention. Uh, check your... Uh, dog or cat's mouth regularly, mm -hmm. um, especially if you see gingivitis, let us know. And if there is an abnormality that's identified, um, try to take action as quickly as possible because once that inflammation is there in the gum line, we know that the more important structures are, are starting to be affected. The sooner we can intervene, the better chance we have at saving teeth. And then follow up with a good dental With a good forever. preventative after. after. Yep. Okay, thanks very much. You gave us a lot of information. Archie was good. He did a good job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, February's Pet Dental Month, um, so yes. we'll be having specials running that whole month. Um, so you can call our office and find out more about those. I guess I better do that. I think I will. Are you a program member? Oh, I'm sure I am. Well, then you can do it any time of year. I know, and I know we just had one of them. You know why I say that? My, my little uh, Shih Tzu um, was seen by Dr. Wade recently, mm -hmm. and and even my black dog was, uh, my older one, and she even said that their teeth were in pretty good shape. So the, the TD has got to be doing something. That's helping. But I'm getting that odor that's coming from yeah. my collie, so I think it's time we check things out with mm -hmm. him. Okay, thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh, if you have any ideas about any programs you'd like to see us do, make sure you contact Connie Lake Bark Park or you contact Armstrong Cable. Give them the ideas and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Thank you.